Um, so yeah, so in our marriage, my role was to just make sure that I kept the family um, like afloat with basically just, you know, doing whatever it is that they needed me to do. Um, and just making sure that I held to my end of the agreement, which was staying married for at least like the five years. Yeah. Um, we actually ended up um, parting in four years just because I became financially stable. And we just thought that it was the best thing to do since we knew that we already had that clause. Mm. So yeah. what, what was going through your mind going into an arranged marriage? Like what, what were your initial thoughts? In that, <laughs> um, initially, honestly, the only reason why I didn't, um, the only reason why I didn't really hesitate in order to in going into the arranged marriage was because I took that course in class about like African American families, mm -hmm. um, and had a little bit of knowledge on what an arranged marriage was. Mm -hmm. So I think without that knowledge, I definitely would have been a little bit more hesitant. And I think it also helped that with my arranged marriage, I already knew the family and I already built a relationship with them. So it wasn't like I was walking into something that was like brand new or something that was like unknown. Mm -hmm. So do you find it beneficial for close friends or parents to be involved before choosing a spouse? I absolutely do, um, especially if, well, whether if you're going into an arranged marriage or if you're going into a marriage for love, um, I think it is important to get the opinion of your elders, um, specifically elders that you trust, yeah. um, especially like when it comes to friends and family. If you're uh, family oriented and you like spending time with the family for holidays and birthdays and sports events, et cetera. And you know you're going to want your spouse in that environment. It is best to go ahead and introduce, you know, like your spouse to your friends and your family, like before you join in union. And sometimes, like our um, our friends and our family, they can see things that we can't see. Mm -hmm. Especially like you know when you're in the midst of the relationship and you got those, you know, what you think are butterflies, and you know you're still in that honeymoon stage. It's like if you're not fully into reality and you can't see like their red flags, it's like sometimes you do need like that that family or that elder or like that really close friend who you trust um, to actually, you know, just kind of give you like their opinion on who you're choosing to be like your potential forever mate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree because they don't have that attachment. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the, the people that's on the outside looking in. If you have questions for today's guest, feel free to leave them in the chat below. We'd we'll love to hear from you. And th this is, I wanted to know, how do you feel about if someone that you trust in your family, whether if it's a close friend or elder, what if they disapprove? Ah, uh, disapprove. I mean, I went through this. Um, not everybody in my family was okay with me choosing to be in an arranged marriage, and not everybody in my family was okay with my uh, with my spouse because, as I said, like me and my spouse, we were like unequally yoked. So a lot of people were like, okay, well, not a lot of people, but a few of my friends uh, who I trusted, they're like, okay, you know, Janira, you like going to church every Sunday. He hasn't been to church since he was like eight. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah so it's like you know they had to point out those little things to me just so I could stay like mindful of it um but I think it's definitely um important for you to make the best decision that's going to I would say improve your life um because I am a woman of God I always believe that you should you know make the best decision on choosing a spouse that's going to um increase or deepen your relationship with God um, and at the end of the day, it's like you can take those opinions um, and you can acknowledge them, acknowledge your friends and your family for their opinions, thank them for their opinions and just try not to, I would say not take it to heart, but try not to get upset if they have an opinion that's different from your own. Yeah. But yeah, we definitely take it into consideration because typically the people around us can see things about our spouses that sometimes we just can't see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
because do, do you think that's like a lost art because people nowadays i mean people they just get married they like <laughs> i'm yeah. not telling anybody you know we might elope um things of that nature but but why do you think what do you think changed throughout because it seemed like back in the day and and in biblical time and stuff like that like where do you think the change came do you think people just became more independent where we don't really value community anymore um absolutely and i mean like you know if you have your relationship with god um and if you study the bible you understand that there is going to be coming a time period where people are going to be more into themselves than they are, you know, their loved ones. And I feel like that as we are approaching those times, you're going to like, you're going to witness a lot of people who are going to make decisions like just based on themselves without thinking about how it's going to affect the people around them. Mm -hmm. And I think because we went through because I would say like somewhere around 2000, somewhere around 2008, between 2012, I remember seeing self-love all over the internet. It was self-love this, self-love that, self-care this. <laughs> and it's like, it was literally all about self. And I'm like, okay, so we're, we're getting more towards self and like away from the community. And I think that definitely played a part in people not even considering their elders, not considering getting like premarital counseling or like um, like counseling from elders in the church. Mm -hmm. And people just kind of just did their own thing and did what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I, honestly, I feel like it's unfortunate because I think that also um, contributes to how we have such a high divorce rate now in the United States. Yeah. And I think it's because we have like what you just said, just gotten away from the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because community is is everything. I remember growing up, everyone on the block, we all knew each other's names. We all knew each other's yeah. people, all that <laughs> stuff, you know, and I guess I'm telling my age. But <laughs> there was I mean, if you think about society now, when I come home from work, I can open up my garage door six seven houses down and just go straight into my my driveway and i don't have to speak to anybody close my garage door i'm done you know yeah uh, i remember you know back in the day when you came home there were people outside and you would be speaking to them and you know you just had that community mm -hmm. you know where everybody was somewhat forced to, to know each other um and, and you had people who looked out for you but i guess that's 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 old school stuff now <laughs> you know so yeah. i think it's the same way with dating right we just kind of go on the apps and find someone or whatever and we just like all right i'm, I'm out I got, I got who i want i feel good ah uh, yeah <laughs> yeah right the the, the butterflies right um, right yeah i think we definitely have um gotten a lot into um like just moving with what we feel like you know what people say what the vibes are yeah and not, yeah you know like considering you know who you choose on this dating app could potentially be your spouse and you know like that could be a trickling effect as far as like how your friends and your family could treat you going forward so mm -hmm. I mean, yeah i definitely think it is important to have at the very least like just one person you can like confide in and consult uh, with, you know, like whenever you are in the dating world and, you know, trying to choose a new spouse. Yeah. How, how did, what was your response to like those who you were close to that they, they were telling you like, Oh, he haven't been to church in years. Like, did you, did you take that feedback into consideration or were you just kind of, more set on like I'm going to follow through regardless yeah I mean I definitely took that into consideration because I had to make sure that I still had people in my life who could help keep me grounded so I didn't lose my faith mm -hmm. um and because at the time like that was like the best decision for me um, a lot of like my friends and family they understood why I was making that decision 
um, because I was in a place where um, I was actually staying with my father and my father was falling ill. I was helping uh, take care of him and I didn't know that he was going to pass away the year that he passed away. Like, I thought that, you know, it was a possibility my father was going to get better and, you know, maybe he was going to have like a few more years. And while I was there, um, my plan was to like get myself um, in a place like better financially, you know, purchase my own home, like go from there. But, you know, as they say, sometimes God laughs at your plans. Yeah, <laughs> they right. don't know <laughs> as yeah. you think they are. And um, and going into the arranged marriage was basically like it was for survival and it was my safe haven. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like my family, they didn't fully agree with the guy who I was dating. And it was because my family knew of the relationship we had previously. Because um, we did try to do like the we did try to date um, that didn't work out. We tried to like come back together, everything was working good. Then we got engaged, that didn't work out. So then after that, we was just like, hey, we're just gonna be friends. But he said, you know, I've been taking care of you for the last few years. I'm gonna keep doing my due diligence, even as a friend and making sure that, you know, your car note is paid. If you need a car, I'll buy the car. You know, you need a phone bill paid. Like he just made sure he had like everything on auto pay for me. Um, so, you know, like my family, they understood the aspect of that because it was really hard for me to work and get a psychology degree at the same time, especially like when you're going for your psychology degree, it's like you have to put in um, like clinical hours, you have to write sometimes these 10, 20, 30 page papers, you have like all these deadlines to meet. So it's like trying to work for somebody and trying to like meet like you know the grading requirements it was a huge struggle yeah so yeah my family they fully understood why i was going into an arranged marriage even if they fully didn't agree with it mm -hmm. yeah yeah i understand i mean yeah because that's tough trying to like you say work and go to school i don't even imagine you know um i wanted to ask you do you feel like there's still a societal pressure to get married? 